Does the idea of photographing drinks make you nervous? I mean, admittedly, I was freaked out by them for a good long time because the reflections on glassware make drinks particularly challenging to photograph. But with a few helpful lighting tricks, you might actually discover that you love photographing drinks. After all, liquid creates an extra level of magic when it comes to lighting. What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon. Welcome to my food photography studio. So glad to see you here. So today I'm gonna be walking you through two of my favorite lighting techniques that will hopefully help you in lighting drinks and managing reflections like a pro. Now, as a side note, I am working with artificial lighting today. And if you're brand new to artificial light, do not be afraid. <laughs> I have a step-by-step -step mini course called Pick Your Perfect Light, and it's a great place to get started. I have it linked down in the description box below for you. Also super thrilled to share that today's video is sponsored by Professional Photographers of America. Join a community of over 34,000 photographers and find equipment in insurance, education, and business tools made especially for business owners like you. So diving right on in, tip number one is use backlighting. So I often default to capturing drinks with the primary light source positioned behind the drink. We refer to this as backlighting. The light is behind the subject. This setup works super well for managing reflections because the large highlight that is created when the light directly reflects in the glass, well, it's behind the subject and it's not readily visible to the camera. So let me show you what I mean. So you can see with this setup, I've captured it with the light in two different positions. One where the light is positioned on the side where you can see the large reflection of the softbox in the side of the glass. Whereas when we move the light, positioning it behind the drink, the reflection is no longer visible because the reflection is behind the drink. Now that being said, I do not want to start a rumor that reflections and highlights are bad. Honestly, they help to create dimension and visual interest in an image. So my goal when photographing drinks is not to completely eliminate the reflections, but instead to minimize any reflections that are distracting or covering up too much of the beverage. Now the definition between helpful reflections and distracting ones is different for everyone, and I believe it's a matter of personal taste. There is no set standard. But my recommendation is to study drinks photographs that you like pay attention, study what is happening with the reflections and the highlights, what do you like, what do you not like, find your own preferences, your own level of comfort, and adjust your light accordingly. Now, one of the fun side effects to positioning your light behind the drink, especially when working with translucent drinks, is that it can help the drink to glow. So if we go back to the comparison of the side light versus the backlight, is that you can see in the backlight example that the light is shining through, it adds energy to the drink, it draws attention to, it. I love a good glow. So now before we hop into lighting technique number two, I want to tell you a little bit about today's sponsor and a tool that I use to sharpen my skills as a photographer and a business owner, and that is Professional Photographers of America. For a low monthly price, you receive a variety of unbeatable benefits, including $15,000 worth of equipment insurance, data recovery services, and customizable contracts. They offer tons of benefits, but these ones in particular are crucial for working photographers. For one, the big reason I joined initially was $15,000 worth of equipment insurance. Give your gear the protection it deserves so that you can work with confidence. And this includes full replacement coverage for a flat $350 deductible, or you can repair your equipment at a $50 flat deductible. They also include data recovery services, which in this digital age, mistakes happen, and it's great to know that there is someone literally backing you up. And one of PPA's most useful business resources that I refer to a whole lot are their customizable contracts. You can compare a wide range of documents, including proposals, cancellation letters, model releases, copyright transfers, so much more. So go ahead and follow the link in the description box below for your special discount on membership. Whether you're just beginning and want to start off on the right foot, or you've been at this a while and you want to take your business to the next level, PPA is where you need to be. So thanks so much to PPA for sponsoring this video. Now let's head into lighting technique number two. This one is super fun and kind of trendy, but it's to play with hard light. So if you have ever noticed in food and drinks photography for the better part of the last decade is that there is a lot of application of hard light. Now if that term is new to you, you can understand hard light is when you look at the shadows in an image and the transition has an immediate change from light to dark, that it is a very clear line as opposed to soft light 
light where it's gradual, it's a gradient transition from light to dark. Hard light, soft light. Now the fun part about physics is that it is very predictable the kinds of light sources that create hard light and soft light. So it's all based on the relative size of the light source to the subject and that large light sources create soft light, small light sources create hard light. So if we look behind the scene of these two drinks images, you can see this principle in play, that the soft light is created by a large soft box and the hard light is created by a bare light, which the source in comparison to the size of the drink is very small. Now I love to use both soft light and hard light in drinks photography, but hard light is especially fun because it creates a unique mood and it also creates a really intense intense spot on your glassware because it's a small light source. And maybe at first you're like, oh no, 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 Joni, that spot, that is no good. <laughs> but when it comes to reflections, this is actually a super easy thing to clean up in editing in comparison to larger, more difficult to edit out reflections. So for example, with this image, all I have to do in either Lightroom, Photoshop, Capture One is use the healing brush tool just to get rid of that little spot and no one's the wiser. Pretty easy fix. Fix it in post! The other fun thing about hard light is that it creates a cool dramatic look and we can use it as an opportunity for shadow play. Like in this image, you can see that the shadows almost become their own subjects in the composition, that they're creating leading lines for us. Now, if you're looking for more composition tips, absolutely go ahead to my composition playlist. I've got that linked for you. Now, if you do decide to try out hard light, Definitely play around with the direction of the light, the position of the light, the height, the distance. It will have an impact on the way that the shadows look. But now it's your turn. Hopefully one or both of these techniques has you super excited to break out the glassware and start experimenting. It's time to tackle those fears. And remember to take a look in the description box below for a special discount on your membership at Professional Photographers of America. But with that, thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a fantastic day. You stay out of trouble and I'll see you soon. All right. Bye. And much to popular demand, the bacon, the bacon is back. What's shaking bacon? Gotta shake your bacon. Bacon is shaking from henceforth. Let's bacon on my friend. What's shaking bacon, bacon, bacon?